I think I saw a, a study that said that suicide is either the leading cause or the second leading cause of death for black men. Mm -hmm. um, can you speak to why you feel like that's happening with us specifically? Yeah. Um, so we know that there is a stigma when it comes to black men's mental health. Right. Mm -hmm. And so even like just black men expressing their emotions. Right. And because of that. Right. You're taught to keep it in, be a man, be strong. And you are avoiding yeah. your emotions and your feelings. And when we avoid it, exacerbates anxiety and depression. Mm -hmm. Right. And anxiety and depression is what leads to suicide, internal pain, internal distress not knowing where to turn, because if I decide to turn, I'm not sure if I'm going to get the help or the resource that I need. Right. Or even being able to put language to that to even know what am I experiencing? What is this? Right. Yeah. So can we, mm, yeah, now we, now we get into the conversation. Can we talk about, <laughs> let's go. Yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's talk about the language, right? Yeah. Because uh, I think for the longest time, I didn't have the language to actually be able to articulate what it was that I was experiencing. So I would experience anxiety and I wouldn't know that it's, it was anxiety. I would just be like, yo, why am I sweating? Or like, why am I nervous? Yeah. Not knowing that I have social anxiety and I don't really like being around large crowds of people. Right. Right. Because I've dealt with certain situations where growing up in New York, I've been robbed. Mm -hmm. I've been in situations where I almost got jumped. Right. Mm -hmm. So like, I don't really like being around people because to me, when you're around a large amount of people, like there's a lot of random things that can happen and my mind starts going crazy. I'm like, yo, this person could be thinking this. They could want to do this. They could want to do that. And that creates this like, level of social anxiety. So to get back to my question, um, how do we start to develop this language so that we can be able to articulate what it is that we're experiencing? And why does that even, why does that even matter? Because I know there's some black men right now that's thinking like, why does it even matter if I have the language to express what I'm feeling? Well, it makes all the difference for you to have the language because when you don't have the language, you just think that you are the only one experiencing it. Mm -hmm. You're not able to make sense of it, right? Mm -hmm. And you just want this pain to go away, right? right? And what is that? When we want the pain to go away, we actually remove ourselves, mm -hmm. suicide. Mm -hmm. We actually isolate, right? Mm -hmm. And so when we don't have the language, it exacerbates uh, ignorance, right? For mm -hmm. a lack thereof, the lack of the knowledge to understand what exactly is happening to us. So it's really important. What you just actually described, though, when you're talking about walking in the streets, you've been robbed, you've been jumped, right? Mm -hmm. And so your brain sees a lot of people and it wants to be able to escape. Right. You just talked about the relationship between the nervous system and the brain, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. your nervous system is impacted. It's always receiving information and data. And so past experiences inform our present moments. Mm. And so that nervous system perceives a threat, even though there is no threat, but it remembers the threat for when I was walking down the block and I got jumped or I saw a group of people and I was unsafe because I got because I got robbed. Yeah. Right. And the brain tells a story. We're not safe when there's a lot of people around. Mm. And so we really have to be able to tune in and reflect What's coming up in our bodies? Mm -hmm. A lot of people just think that it's a cognition thing, right? A thought thing. If I change the way I think, everything else will fall into place. But it's not only the way I change the way that I think, right? We change that story, but it also is understanding how I'm feeling. Mm. Yeah. You in your bag right now. Well, I'm in my bag. Yeah, okay. You in your duffel right now. I ain't going to lie. You took me there. No, listen. I, listen, I, I really like that because that really just helped a lot. I really like having these episodes. I was just thinking about this before. I'm, I'm going to go off on a tangent a little bit. But I was just thinking about this before we had the episode. I was thinking to myself, like, I really have the honor of being able to, like, sit down with professionals like yourself and have these, like, in-depth conversations about some of the things that may be impacting other Black men, but mm -hmm. oftentimes impact me. And it gives me almost like, for lack of better words, a free therapy session. Because that is something that you would... Like you would mention that in a, in a session with yeah, somebody. Yeah, and to that, educate like, them. Exactly. And that's a revelation. I think that's what's so powerful about the platform because people get to kind of have like not necessarily a session, but they get to kind of get the insight of a session from a podcast episode. Yeah. So I appreciate you sharing all that because there may be a black man right now that's like trying to rationalize why does he feel that way? Like I just mentioned, mm -hmm. right? And you saying that helps him to think, okay, I have something going on in my body, but Yes, I can change the way I think about it, mm -hmm. but I also have to understand how do I feel about it. Right, right. And how do I want to feel? So asking the right questions is really important. Mm -hmm. So again, the language, mm -hmm. right? Us being able to speak about it, you being able to have this platform, being able to have conversations that are open, 
allow black men to have the language of what's coming up in their bodies and their minds. Right. Yeah. I love that. One of the things about suicide that I read in a book, I can't remember the name of the book, man. Um, but I read in a, in, a, in a book that there's like different levels or stages of suicide, right? And there's like suicide ideations and then there's like if you have a plan and all that. Do, mm -hmm. you, do you know what I mean by that? Yeah. Can you break down like what, what that is so that people can understand? Right. Mm -hmm. So, actually, you know, suicide ideations is having the thoughts of maybe I want to be here. Maybe I don't want to be here. Mm -hmm. Right. Maybe I could do something. Maybe I won't do something. But if I did do something, maybe this feeling would go away. Mm -hmm. Right. Just the mm -hmm. idea, the thought about it. Mm -hmm. And then suicidality is actually completion mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. Right. And to be suicidal is I have a plan. I am going to do this. I know exactly how I'm going to do this. Mm. I am leaving notes. I know that there's going to be an action. Mm. So those are the different, right? We go from the ideation to suicidality. In between is when someone is suicidal. Because I feel like oftentimes us as men, we don't have like deep friendships. Like yeah. we have friendships. We got bros. I go to, you know, if I call my bro up and I want to go to the bar or whatever, or go chill. We'll go hang out and, t you know, and talk. We'll mm -hmm. talk about sports. We're not going really dive too deep into like how I'm feeling, how he's feeling, mm. that kind of thing. How do you feel like um, men can cultivate deeper relationships and why is that important in the context of like suicide ideation, suicide, suicidality? Yeah, well, in regards to suicide, suicide I can't say the word. It's all well, good. in regards to suicidality, mm. it's important to have connections. It's mm -hmm. important to have community, right? That's when healing happens. And it's hard because men have been taught to, hey, what's up? Let's talk about the game, right? Keep it very surface because if I talk too deep about my emotions, then I'm simping or mm -hmm. I ain't no, you know, I, I'm, you know, I'm not going there, right? Mm -hmm. um, but we can ask deeper questions. If we truly want to be able to establish relationships, yeah. then we will start getting curious about exploring deepening our connections that we right, have right and that starts by just asking questions right people go so much off assumptions yeah and if i do this they're gonna like you played out the whole story i want to know what the fact is of that story mm. so one of the things that i always ask my clients or i ask people that what are the facts because because mm. we going off we have an emotional responses to a story that we created mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's called assumptions mm. what are the facts what's actually going on and we don't know the facts until we ask questions until we just see what's right. actually happening. And then we can come to a solution or we can come to um, theory understanding from actually doing the thing, exploring yeah. more. So you're saying for us to build deeper relationships with, with other men, we got to just have deeper conversations. You have to have deeper conversations. Right. And if you're watching this, then it's really important for you to make a commitment, right? Because with awareness, we have opportunity to modify our behaviors, right, right? Right. So we're not just watching this to watch this, but we're watching this to gain knowledge, to implement change, mm -hmm. and really be able to do something different, change the narrative that the story, the narrative that has always been. Yeah. Right. So I think that it's really important for us to be able to ask questions. Yeah. Ask questions. Yeah. That cultivate conversation. No, I like that a lot. I like that a lot because I have like multiple friend groups and um, I don't think, I think um, there's really one or two friend groups that I can go to and like I can really like have deep conversations mm -hmm. with. The rest are like really service level and it's not that, you know, I don't want it to be deeper. It's just that there's just, I, there's just certain blockages there. Um, but with this, with the converse, with the groups that I, we have deep conversations in, it's because like, We'll start with one conversation about something and everybody will see like how people respond. And then it creates a like you talked about earlier with the to do list, but it creates something like a momentum where it's like, OK, cool. I can actually have these conversations in here because we just talked about his son crying about his girl the other mm -hmm. day and nobody was like laughing at him. or anything. Right. So I can actually come in here and talk about being depressed because mm -hmm. I know nobody's going to feel some type of way. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, what ends up happening, though, is certain Certain conversations are brought up in groups and what will happen is there will be an adverse reaction or like a negative response. So like, let's say I bring up, man, I just went through depression and some, somebody in the group is like, man, you pussy. 
like now all the now I'm like, oh hell, I'm never bringing this up. But then also other other people in that group see that and they're like, oh yeah, this is not a space where I can feel comfortable. I've seen this before. I've seen men that have like said, okay, you know, because I see these questions, or, you know, I see what you're doing with the platform. But I try this with my friend group and it didn't work. It didn't work out. Like, what would you say to him that like his struggle with the friend group that he has? Like, what are some things yeah. that he could potentially do? Yeah. So I think what's important, right, when we talk about making a vow in order to be able to make new decisions or mm. ask different questions when we're gaining the knowledge, mm. your friend says, oh, you pussy. Mm. That is great opportunity to educate. Mm. Right. It's not OK. You just shut down because mm. then we leave him out. Oh, OK. We have great opportunity to educate, especially because I want to be able to express myself. Mm. You never felt sad before or frustrated. Mm. I like that. Yeah. You never felt hurt or betrayed. Mm. Right. Giving them the language right. because they don't have the language. They have the ignorance. Mm. And so mm. as we learn more, there's a due diligence mm. for us to be able to educate the people that are in our group. Mm. He doesn't know. He has no idea until you put him on. Right. I like that. We got to grab that as a clip. I'm just going to make sure I say that right you now. <laughs> now. Because listen, sometimes, you know what I'm saying? If I leave it up to them, they're going to yeah. grab certain clips. <laughs> but I'll make sure y'all grab that clip. Because I'm saying to grab that clip specifically because I really want to post that. Because I really was expecting a different answer. I'm going to tell you what oh. I was expecting. I was expecting you to say, oh, we're going to find new friends. Mm-mm. So you look, you created a story in your I head. Did. Had I did. I found the facts. What are the facts? <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. I love learning in real time. It's excellent. I found the facts. <laughs> I said, let me ask this question anyway. Let me just see where mm. we go. But now I really like that answer because I'm going to steal that. I'm going to, next time somebody tells me, yo, bro, I can't do this because my friend, I'm going to be like, yo, bro, nah, but what did you say in response? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? Because that is that really matters. Yep. And I know like, there are certain situations where I I would have that response. Mm. I'll be like, yo, bro, what's wrong with what's wrong with me crying about that? Or what's right. wrong with me dealing with this or that and responding in a certain way? Like, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And then it creates a space where we can now have the conversation for everybody to get educated. Exactly. Mm. I I ooh, you hit. I don't use in here early and talking about you dealing with this and dealing with that. It's you true. We still right. we still power through. We nah, nah, I love I, I love it. I love it. I love it for sure because nah, you really, I I really like that. I'm I'm being so honest with you. Oh good. I I don't. There's not many times in a podcast episode where I will tell. I will literally say we got to grab that as a clip. We definitely have to grab. And I don't care what it does, like numbers wise, engagement or anything yeah. like that. I just think it's a really good mindset shift because mm. we so often, like <clears throat> when we don't get the response that we want, again, we go into the avoidance, the shutting down thing. And what your response was like is instead of avoiding it, tackle it head on. Right. Like, okay, somebody didn't give you the response that you want. Mm-hmm. Now is your opportunity to then again go back and knock on the door, basically. Right. But right. we don't like doing that because it's like, why I gotta, you know what I'm saying? Why I gotta go and still have the conversation with, nah, he just, he basically just dubbed me. So well, now he's a dub. Someone has to be the leader in vulnerability, right? Mm. That's what you're saying. That's yeah. That's it. Just, just, <laughs> listen, you out here. I gotta get you a shirt. <laughs> you, earlier you was like, listen, you mess yourself black, man. Yeah. Now you're saying, Leo, listen, I gotta get you, I gotta get you a shirt, man. I gotta get you a shirt. Nah, I love it. I love it, man. So we talked about um, identifying the language, right? Mm-hmm. Um, how do like when we identify the language, how does that help us to understand like how these like emotions, behaviors and everything that we experience, like how that all connects and creates what we may be feeling? That's a good question. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I love that you actually are aware that it's mm-hmm. all interwoven together. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Because we can have a thought. Mm-hmm. Right. So when we talk about like assumption, like we said before, right, we can assume that something is going to happen. Therefore, our body has already developed an emotion right. from that thought right. that leads us to behave in a certain way, right? right. You had the thought that I'm going to answer this question anyway, even though I already know I already know the answer, right? Yeah. The emotion <laughs> is like, whatever, let me just have her answer this question. Behavior is like, okay, that reinforced the thought. However, there was an interruption. 
Mm -hmm. right? Because I didn't give something that solidified that thought. Oh, now I have a different emotion that had a different outcome, a different behavior because that thought, original thought wasn't reinforced. Right. And so being able to understand that how I feel impacts how I think, Mm. that impacts how I behave, that reinforces that thought is really important. Mm. There's something in psychology that talks about how the brain fires is how it will wire, Mm. right? So the things that I think about, the things that come up for me, how my thought process is, is the cycle that I will continue to be in. Unless I have new knowledge, new understanding, and I'm able to form new forms of thinking that we call new neural pathways that I'm able to build, Mm -hmm. that I will have a different thought that will lead to a different emotion, that will lead to a different behavior. Mm -hmm. Um, So just being able to understand that, that it is all encompassed. It's not just reframing my thought, but it's understanding that there is a link.